So fish room update number one, that's actually coming out on my own channel um, and not an overly heavily uh, edited video. So a couple things that are kind of happening here in the fish room, uh, changing things up a bit. So this rack that I would say is, is on the south wall um, in my fish room, formerly had two 20 highs that were normal, uh, long kind of, um, what do you call that? Not end to end, end to end is when you do this, but basically just normal uh, landscape kind of view, if you will, right? So this rack has always had the 220 longs and a 10 on the end, um, 220 highs, two 10s on the end, on the middle and on the bottom racks. And so what you'll see is that on the bottom, I've already converted to having four 20 highs end on end. And now I'm in the process slowly of two 20 highs that needs to move and then that will turn into 220 highs. So what I basically did was repurpose a couple tanks um, instead of actually throwing them away and um, getting new ones because they're all drilled. So this is how they were, drilled in the back with the overflow. And as the disclaimer, the air is off, the dehumidifier is off and the air circulating fan in the fish room is off so you can hear me. Um, and so what I've done to patch that is with aquarium safe silicone uh, that's actually a piece of lexan uh, that i've cut to be square on the other side and i pressed it and sealed it in place with silicone um, so that has actually worked very very well to seal the hole looks mildly tacky but you know better than throwing away four 20 highs and then having to buy four new 20 highs um, and then now you'll see that they are drilled um, on the back so i had to drill new holes as well and basically why I'm doing this is just to increase tank capacity, um, you know, increase the number of grow out tanks, of breeding tanks. Uh, the 20 highs work really well for discus and angels. Um, so that will work out for me in that sense. And then actually, you know, going down to what do I have in these tanks? So these two tanks right here labeled, let's see if we can get that into focus, C1 and C2. Oh wow, they're right. Well, so yeah, they are a, a corridor of fish in the sea tanks. That's a, that was a convenient coincidence. So these are Scleromystix barbatus, and I'm probably butchering that genus name. Uh, they're the banded cori. And what I've done is I, I brought in a group of 12, but I've split them up into two different tanks. And the reason why I did that um, is to not have all my eggs in one basket, uh, but also to kind of test out two different substrates. So I'm going with a fine grain sand in this tank, in the C2 tank, and then I'm doing a uh, coarser, but not, you know, not normal aquarium gravel, uh, finer grain gravel in this one. Uh, Plant-wise, you know, Amazon sword, I think that's a red flame sword back there. Um, Java moss, Java moss here, and dwarf, uh, tiger lotus bulb, dwarf tiger lotus bulb. So I'm trying to keep things similar, feeding them the same. Uh, they're getting extreme nano, extreme um, 1.5 millimeter sinking pellets, um, as well as nightly baby brine shrimp. So those are uh, banded quarries right there. And the whole goal is, uh, you know, kind of the, the factory, I know factory doesn't exactly have the nicest uh, ring to it, but you know, just producing a lot of these uh, because these are something that I can take into aquarium co-op um, and we really shouldn't have any trouble moving these fish. So then coming over to this tank, Corydorus venezuelanus, and uh, again, probably butchering that scientific name, but nonetheless, uh, Venezuelan quarries, really, really cool. And these are probably the most active Corydoras um, I've ever kept. Not that I've kept a ton, uh, but I'm really enjoying these guys. They're just constantly swimming around, constantly um, you know, inter interacting with each other. So I'm really enjoying them. Again, these guys are getting the same diet, extreme nano, extreme 1.5 millimeter sinking pellet and uh, baby brine shrimp. Uh, I've got some Anubias that I had from another tank, big old clump of Java moss in there. And then we're running a, a Ziz for filtration. And then this tank is gonna have Corydoras equis. And I've had this group, um, I've lost I think one or two along the way, but I've had them for about a year and a half. Uh, zero breeding activity whatsoever. Uh, and so there they are. Let's see if we can focus on them. But the water's nice and brown. Um, got a lot of tannins in there. And so what I'm basically trying to do is this is, from my research, this is one of the most difficult corridor species to breed, uh, which really, you know, 
I'm not gonna have <laughs> that. That really puts me behind the eight ball because you know the the most success I've had with corridors is just the the panacories that I've kept in a community tank that I've bred on their own, um, and then some you know my own egg pulling and and raising up fry. So I've 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 raised corridors before, uh, but all these species are completely new to me. Uh, and this again is a species that is apparently very difficult. Um, I'm now trying all their cones. I'm trying catapa leaves. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get the pH lower. I'm trying to get more tannins in the water. Uh, I've seen from watching a, a Corridora talk that uh, they like kind of boggish, low flow conditions. So that sponge filter, actually when it does run, it is a, a very low flow. And I've got a little spawning mop back there and some water sprite uh, just to get some uh, some natural plants in there, but then also something that they can really burrow into and you know see if they want to lay eggs in there. So uh, you know this is just going to be a patient thing and uh, let them do their thing. I I'm fairly confident that I have females. Um, trying to look at the anal fin to see if I could tell if they're a little bit sharper, uh, but or is it the pelvic? No, it's the the anal fins where the females will carry that kind of egg basket. Um, so I see that kind of spade rounded tail on the females, uh, but I'm not so sure that in this group I'm seeing a sharper um, anal tail to, to denote that it might be a male. So it could just be that I don't have a male in this group as well. Um, but you know, just gonna be patient with these guys, uh, do some cold water changes or at least inject cold water and see if that does anything. Try to monitor bare, uh, you know, barometric pressure changes when a storm front moves in and see if that does anything to trigger. Um, so I, I think this will just be fun to uh, see if I can breed these guys. Yeah, so moving on. The other major thing that I would wanna talk about in this particular update is uh, kind of breaking up the discus groups. So these are the ultra skittish uh, pigeon blood discus. They're mildly less skittish. They used to be in this tank over here, which uh, I posted on Instagram. I've actually had uh, a pair, there's four of them in here, but uh, I've got a, a pair paired up and they laid eggs right there. And so you'll notice dirty glass. I still need to do a little bit of a gravel vacuuming in here. So this is definitely not like a very polished um, fish room tour whatsoever, just kind of fish room tour on the raw. While discus, still doing very well. Need to do a little bit of gravel vacuuming. Yeah, that guy wants to present decently well. And then the other major updates I would say for this particular update, and I've hopefully I'm injecting some nice B-roll into here so you're not just uh, listening to me to talk as I hold this phone. But uh, let's see if I can go in here and zoom in. Celestial Pearl Danios. So I've never kept these before. Uh, but this is, again, another fish that if I can breed it, we can basically sell it. Um, and again, it's not to make money. It's just to, to have fun breeding and then to know that at the end of the day, somebody's actually really going to want these fish. And so they're not just going to sit around in a tank and take up, uh, you know, valuable real estate in a retail store, uh, but that they'll actually, you know, have, uh, uh, you know, the, they're, they're sought after, right? And so with these guys, I've got this uh, container in here with a big old bunch of uh, java moss and a bristle nose for cleanup. Hopefully he's not eating any eggs. So the idea is that the Celestial Pro Daniels are coming in here, laying their eggs in that java moss. And then that java moss container is gonna get moved into this tank. And that big clump is terrestrial moss from my yard. And so there's some bits of like decaying wood matter underneath and all that good stuff. And the idea here is from another talk that um, Rosario Lacourt, Eric Broadrock, uh, they use this technique and apparently what it does is uh, infusoria. So infusoria will start to appear in here because of the wood breaking down. Um, you know, maybe one of these days on the podcast, I'll have somebody that is inherently and infinitely much smarter, smarter on the topic. Talk about that a little bit more as far as what's actually occurring. Um, but yeah, so put that java moss in here. Hopefully the eggs hatch. Uh, those little fry then have something to eat, and then I can start giving them baby brine shrimp. I've never raised Danios before, or I've actually never bred Danios or Tetras or um, any small fish like that. So this is gonna be a fun little experiment. And again, hopefully that can be just a fun thing to help occupy some tank space, because I do have a couple of vacant tanks right now. Um, yeah, got rid of the, or I don't wanna say got rid of, but I, I found homes for my angelfish breeders. So I've got a couple of generations of angelfish fry still left. 
Um, this one's actually really fun. My my youngest son loves coming in here because this is pretty much eye level for him. So he's 11 months old. And this tank right here, he just absolutely loves. And I think I've got some video of that. But yeah, got the brine shrimp going. So this hatchers, the air is off. Uh, I am gonna harvest out some brine shrimp, feed the fish room. Maybe I can get some B-roll of that as well. Panda is here. So yeah, another another fish that we won't have any problem moving. Uh, breed them out. And that'll just be uh, nice and fun and really put this fry system to use. Uh, right now, all three are occupied by uh, bristlenose. So bristlenose are, are constantly kicking out, definitely focusing more on super reds. So I've got um, numerous tanks of spawning super reds just kind of all over the place uh, i would expect some some fry out of this group pretty soon this is the original group way down here this tank needs to be gravel vac but you'll see you know there's just there's just fry everywhere and then maybe i'll leave you with the uh mildly dirty and clouded water but just a fun tank super red long fins and just cherry shrimp galore and the cherry shrimp are throwing kind of the oranges and yellow so this is just a lot of fun and there was a mom on here fanning her eggs and i think i got some much better uh, footage of that that i can inject into here so yeah hope you enjoyed this fish room video one last thing before i go if you haven't got one yet the new aquarium co-op series of t-shirts got the co-op logo on the side Cardinal Tetra, Angelfish, Discus. These things are awesome.